Welcome to another episode of Not Your Dad's Beer here at Euclid Hall, one of the best beer bars in downtown Denver. I'm joined by Jason McCormick, the wine guy. He knows a lot about wine, he taught me a lot about wine, he taught me a lot about salesmanship, and uh, he doesn't overly have a great beer palette yet, but uh, I thought I'd invite him over. We'll taste some really cool beer. Excited? Absolutely. Cool. So we've already done the uh, Salvation by Avery, really phenomenal golden. So now we're going to do Russian Rivers Salvation, which is right here, Belgium Dark Strong Ale. Uh, Russian River is located out of Santa Rosa, California, just north in the foothills of San Francisco, if you will. Um, this is predominantly, they're considered one of the best breweries in the world, probably top five, at least in the United States. Uh, Vinny, who is the brewmaster slash owner, he's a straight chemist geek. Like, what he does is chemistry when it comes to making beer. Um, they actually made a new category for the Great American Beer Festival called Wild American Ale, which is pretty much for him because of this entire line, the Shun series, which is a lot of barrel, it's all barrel aged stuff. So barrel aging, uh, he came from the world of wine and wanted to make beer because beer takes you know three months to produce where wine takes over a year. Uh, now it's funny because all the beer that he makes takes over a year to produce, just like wine, who knew? <laughs> so the Shun series is fun. Everything on the end of the series is called T-I-O-N, Shun. So we have basically what comes to Colorado, which is redemption, uh, consecration, supplication, redemption, uh, sanctification, temptation, and of course, salvation. So salvation is a Belgian dark strong ale. When you brew, or rather, they made a collaborative effort, if you will, to make collaboration, not litigation, which is a combination of Avery salvation, Russian River salvation. So we're gonna break it down. We've already done the Avery, so now we're gonna do the Russian River. We're gonna see what it's like. Uh, I should also note here, you could haul every beer you see in front of you is available for sale. Everyone, aside from collaboration and Hogs Heaven. So everything else you see, come down to Euclid Hall, it's here for you. So we're going to go ahead and pop open um, Salvation. We're going to see what it's going to taste like. I've not had it. Have you? Negative good strategy. Wonderful. Pattern's full on that, but it's about to open up, and we're going to get a good taste on it. So uh, stay tuned. Cool. So we're going to go ahead and pop open Salvation by Russian River. The Belgian Dark Strong Ale comes in at 9%. When you get to Belgian beer, there's categories of uh, singles, doubles, triples, quads. When you get to a Dark Strong Ale that doesn't really necessarily have that category, what you're really looking at is, is encompassing a double to a quad type nature. So there should be um, big malts on this, you know, double to quadruple the amount of, of the normal beer per se. Belgian candy sugar, which comes out of Belgium, it produces a residual sweetness to it and dark fruit flavor. So it's baked in plums. So that's what we're kind of hoping to see out of this. I haven't had it. Let's uh, go ahead and pop the cork and go from there. All the Russian River stuff, when it comes to their shun line, will definitely be corked and caged refurbished in the bottle, it is actually a living ale. What that means is, nice. That means that the yeast is still alive in the bottle right now, doing its thing. So this means most of the stuff can be cellared. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, pour it away and see what we get off of it. So as you can see right, up, right off the bat, there's a ton of protein. That's what causes the head to really lift up. The bubbles are really nice and tight, almost champagne-like. If you get real close, you can just see the individual bubbles. It is receding, it started off pretty quickly, and now it's kind of coming down a little bit. Um, the color itself is a light mocha tan, if you'd ask me. It's just off-white, but still has brown hues to it. The very top of the beer, when it comes to the head, is looking like a little foam, and it's kind of receding outward, um, which is kind of interesting. So we'll give it a good swirl. So you can see, the literally, the head just stays right there on top. The proteins are huge. I don't know if you can come over the very top, you'll be able to see that when you give it a good swirl, the very center stays lively coming up while the outside next to the glass is receding down. So it, it really has really good head retention on this. So we're going to go ahead and cork or cock the glass a little bit, throw more booze in there. Um, color, literally, it is a very, very dark blackish brown. It has red hues to it. Which I'm going to lift this up, maybe you can see it. It has a very dark vermilionous, slight ruby when the light hits it off the sides. Um, so it's not exactly black, it's still transparent. You can see kind of through it. You can see in terms of head retention and lacing, give it another good swirl here. It falls off quick, tight bubbles, but really has a mushroom head right in the center, which is really interesting. Um, this looks like this is, uh, it's going to be a really, really good tasting beer. So we're going to go ahead and give it a taste and see what we think. All right, so we've got Salvation Ford, Belgian Dark Strong Ale, 9%, 12 ounce bottle, probably for a very good reason. Easily share like we just did, or you know, one sitting. Um, but let's go ahead and give it a taste, give it a smell, see what we're pulling off of it, yeah? Cool. And she's 
smell the carbonation. The, the carbonation in, in beer just has a, it's, it's like a metallic flavor, is what I get off of it. I don't know how to describe it. You can smell the carbonation. There's definitely some effervescence on that. It uh, kind of brightens up your palate uh, when you inhale, for sure. Get any fruit off the nose? Mm. Raspberry. There you go. All right. Definitely consider one of the darker fruits. Maybe not too pungent, but it's there. Yeah, I would say dark raspberry, maybe even uh, going into blackberry, but I think there's a little bit more residual sugar that um, I don't think you're going to get off of the palate. I can just smell it. Cool. Cheers. Give it a taste. chocolate cocoa nut, cocoa type flavors off of it. And it's yes. not overbearingly sweet, bittersweet chocolate. It's almost unsweetened chocolate, minor, but the cocoa-ness is right yeah, up front. I think that would be even bordering on milk chocolate. There that's, you go. That's got some smoothness to it. You definitely get the cocoa bean out of it. Um, I would say there's a touch of raspberry. It's, it's a, a hint of sour. Yeah, a hint of sour. Hint. Just a hint. This is definitely barrel is so. lovely. This is... Um, I'd say more um, wine oriented as far as my palate's concerned. It's got more body to it. It's got uh, more depth. Definitely more complex than the Absolutely. Others. This, I would not say it would be um, something that I would want to drink at a ball game, but something I would want to enjoy with a nice dinner with friends. What kind of food could you pair this up with? Anything dark. I mean, I, you could go pork on this, but definitely something, uh, maybe a dinner glass on a filet mignon, something like that. It's really well carbonated. And here's why beer is so much better for pairing with food than wine. A lot of people who love wine, myself included, um, a lot of them will disagree, but carbonation cleanses the palate, something that wine cannot do. It eats away all the residual, uh, the fattiness and, and the richness on your palate, allows for a fresh bite. If you have foie gras, the best thing to chase it down with is vodka. Reason being, it's a palate cleanser ready for the next course. You're not left with that rich butteriness on your mouth. Beer kind of works the same way. You need really rich filet mignon, a really good demi glace with it, finish it off, take a swig of beer, you are fresh and ready for your next bite of whatever it's going to be. You won't have that residual flavor there. This is really good though. This is spectacular. And this is very wine-like in the sense that it's thick, it's full <laughs> body, really good carbonation, deep, deep notes. You taste the oak, similar to what you get off a of Cabernet. Um, this is one of those beers, like, I don't know if I want to drink it or just rub it on my face. Exactly. This <laughs> is amazing. It'll go really well with dessert, oh, I think, I, too. Oh, I think yeah. the fruit think off chocolate? of this one come out big time. Chocolate, raspberries, blackberries. Even uh, into a creme anglaise, something like that, where you know, you've got that richness with the butter. Absolutely. Oh, it's fantastic. And you don't even taste the alcohol, do you? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is subtly smooth. It's ridiculous. It's silky. I'm actually not even listening to you anymore. I'm just going to drink this. There you go. And this is a guy who doesn't drink beer, so it's awesome. Uh, so this is Salvation by Russian River. They're Belgium Dark Strong Ale, only available once a year. Limited allocation out here to uh, Colorado. Um, you can probably pick some up at Colorado Liquor Mart, as well as Mile High Liquor out in, um, oh crap, they're out there in the west. You can't get it. Applejack there? Applejack is a good possibility if you want to make the trek up there. It's not too far from Denver. It's about 40, 40 minutes or so. They always have a, a large selection. Or, if you live downtown, just come into Euclid Hall, and we have it, and make it right here available for you. Yeah, there's no reason to go anywhere else. Obviously. Nowhere. No. And, I mean, you can pick this up, go home, make yourself a nice dinner. Or you can come in here, have a really rich poutine. This is actually go with anything here because of that carbonation and the complexity. Really balance out anything you're going to eat away. I agree. And this is something, once again, this is not a beer that you would drink at a ball game. Uh, not a beer that you typically drink at your own house. This is something that's a celebration type beer. It's celebratory. This is something where, you know, you come out with friends. We have a good dinner. Uh, you're going to take your girlfriend out on a date or a boyfriend. This is what you should be drinking. This is... I don't want a bottle of wine tonight. I want a really awesome bottle of beer. This is a great substitute. Cool? I concur. Excellent. Cheers. Thank you for joining us once again. Not your dad's beer. Jason McCormick, Mark Bays, here for you. Drink safe. Enjoy yourself. We'll see you next time. Adios.